The Senate Armed Services Committee about to gavel in to hear from Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and from the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Martin Dempsey, about the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, on September 11, 2012, that resulted in the death of Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans. A week ago today, this committee heard from Senator Chuck Hagel, nominated by the President to be the next Defense Secretary. And in the wake of that testimony, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina said he would put a, put a hold on Senator Hagel's, former Senator Hagel's nomination unless Secretary Panetta agreed to testify on what actions the Pentagon took before, during, and after those attacks in Benghazi, Libya. This is the first of two hearings we'll show you today on C-SPAN. This hearing and later this afternoon, the confirmation hearing for CIA Director nominee John Brennan, currently the counterterrorism chief. Good morning, everybody. Today, the committee welcomes Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, to testify about the Department of Defense's response to the deadly terrorist attack on the U.S. Temporary Mission Facility and Annex in Benghazi, Libya, on September 11th and 12th of last year, and the findings of its internal review following that attack including lessons learned from Benghazi. Um, we, I want to just remind the colleagues that we will be receiving testimony next Tuesday morning on the impacts of sequestration and or a full year continuing resolution on the Department of Defense. And our witnesses there will be Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Department's Controller, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I hope that today's hearing will inform this committee of any changes that have been made or are being proposed to the posture of U.S. forces overseas to respond to similar terrorist attacks in the future as we saw in Benghazi, and the Department of Defense's assessment of the recommendations that are included in the Secretary of State's Accountability Review Board that affect DOD's installations or operations overseas. In November of in November, the Department of Defense released a timeline of its response to the assault of September 11th and 12th in Benghazi, including the decisions made on the deployment of various forces based in the United States or overseas. A copy of this timeline is in front of us. I think we each have it, and it will be included in the record. According to the timeline, within 20 minutes of the assault on the State Department's temporary mission facility, the Department of Defense's first action was to redirect an unmanned surveillance platform from a mission over Darna, Libya, to provide better awareness of the events on the ground in Benghazi. Following consultations at the White House, Secretary Panetta convened a series of meetings in the Pentagon to discuss <laughs> options for expanding the Department of Defense's response, as well as to prepare for the potential outbreak of further violence throughout the region. During these meetings, Secretary Panetta authorized a number of deployments. I hope that Secretary Panetta and the Chairman will provide the committee with detail on the circumstances that led them to these decisions. 
Since September, there's been a great deal of focus on the supporting role that the Marine Corps Guards played, play in many U.S. diplomatic missions abroad. The Marine Corps did not have an element in Benghazi as it was not an embassy, but a temporary mission facility. The committee will be closely monitoring the use of these Marines. Our fiscal year 2013 National Defense Authorization Act that requires the Secretary of Defense to conduct an assessment of the mission of the Marine Security Guard program, whether it should be expanded, and to report to Congress on the results of this review. More immediately, the provision requires the Secretary to develop a plan to increase the number of Marines in the Marine Security Guard program by up to 1,000 Marines to improve security at our embassies, consulates, and other diplomatic facilities. Based on Secretary Clinton's recent testimony before Congress, it is clear that the State Department and the Department of Defense are already consulting on this review. The Secretary of State's Accountability Review Board focused on the need to ensure the State Department puts greater focus on high-risk, high-threat posts, as well as posts where the host nation, despite having the will to protect diplomatic facilities, does not have the capacity to protect them. In some cases, these posts are located in countries where the Department of Defense and the State Department have assistance programs with similar objectives. These are perhaps areas where the two departments can explore whether additional collaboration is appropriate. During Secretary of State Clinton's recent testimony before Congress, she emphasized the importance of properly resourcing U.S. Africa Command. AFRICOM reached full operational capability less than five years ago and has been in what's called an economy of force effort to date. The events of last September raised questions about the adequacy of the Department of Defense's resourcing with respect to AFRICOM in terms of funding, assigned personnel, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance support. As an example, until the beginning of the current fiscal year, AFRICOM did not have a dedicated commanders and extremist force, which is an emergency standby force but rather it shared its force with U.S. European Command. In recent years, the committee has sought to provide the Department of Defense with flexible AFRICOM-specific authorities to support the burgeoning requirements of the command, such as the African Cooperation Authority, targeted train and equip authorities to support deployments of the African Union mission in Somalia, and flexible military construction authorities. The committee looks forward to learning whether any additional actions might be taken to further support AFRICOM's programs and operations. Unfortunately, to date, much of the discourse about the events surrounding the deadly attack against our facilities and people in Benghazi have focused on the preparation and dissemination of unclassified talking points that were prepared at the request of Congress by our nation's intelligence professionals and approved by their most senior leadership. These talking points are relevant, but even more relevant than finding out, as Secretary Clinton said, why these militants decided as they did is to find those militants and bring them to justice and to do everything that we can to prevent it from ever happening again. Since the events in Benghazi, individuals and groups with the same motivations as those that attacked the U.S. facility in Benghazi have attempted to expand their territory in the nation of Mali, as well as take hostage dozens of innocent civilians and attempt to destroy a natural gas facility in Algeria. Today, the United States is providing its unique enabling capabilities to the French military operations and the deployment of African forces from nations around the region. As Secretary Panetta has stated repeatedly, it is critical that the United States continue to pursue those groups and individuals 
seeking to attack the United States and our interests. I expect the Secretary and the Chairman this morning will provide their assessment of the threat that's posed by these groups to regional and international security, as well as our effort to counter their operations. The four Americans that our nation lost last September were among the very best expression of what it means to be an American. Hardworking, energetic, optimistic, dedicated not just to furthering the interests of their own nation, but to ensuring that others could enjoy the same freedom and opportunity that we hold so dear. We honor the sacrifice of those Americans, and in their name, we will do everything that we can to prevent a repetition of Benghazi. Since this is likely Secretary Panetta's last hearing before this committee, and a broad smile has now appeared upon his face, I want to take a moment to offer my personal thanks to Secretary Leon Panetta for your service to our country, for your leadership at the Defense Department, Secretary Panetta. You have exhibited qualities of honesty, candor, humility, fair-mindedness, and a great sense of humor. All of those were essential during the tenure that you've had as secretary. So we thank you, Leon, for your service to our nation and for your great cooperation as well with this <coughs> committee. <clears throat> Senator Inhofe. 